Thank you very much, Nas, for your kind introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you all for attending my talk. Today, I'm going to present our recent work on analytic modeling and the quality of service in wireless multimedia networks. Specifically, we will address three important challenges. Firstly, how to model heterogeneous signal traffic and the Poisson traffic in wireless multimedia networks. Secondly, how to develop a cost-effective analytic model for a hybrid scheduling mechanism, which can provide the desirable quality of service in wireless multimedia networks. And thirdly, how to use the analytic model to improve the network design and to get guaranteed surface capacity service capacity for the system. The talk will start with a brief introduction to the background, motivation, and the objectives of this research. Secondly, we will describe how to model heterogeneous Poisson traffic and similar traffic, which have been shown in the realistic wireless networks. And thirdly, we will present the analytic model we developed for priority queuing, which is a fundamental shaping mechanism widely used in computing and communication systems. We will focus on the performance metrics, queue length distribution, and the loss probability. We will then extend the modeling method to deal with the hybrid scheduling mechanism. In particular, we will propose an efficient queue decomposition method which can divide the original complex hybrid scheduling system into individual single 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 queuing single uh, system so that we can reduce the system complexity and make the model tractable. After that, the model will be validated and used for network resource management and optimization in terms of buffer allocation and the minimum bandwidth requirements subject to quality of service constraints. Finally, we will conclude this study and direct some future work. Over the past decade, we have witnessed the explosive development and the rapid revolution of information and communications technologies. So we are enjoying the daily use of the internet, web service, and smart mobile devices to improve the quality of our life and advance our society. Then, what about the future? The first trend of the emerging applications in informatics is to support mobile multimedia, such as live mobile video, 3D video stream, and cloud-based multimedia applications and services. As you know, to create 3D viewing experience, we need not only 3D glasses, but also we need additional video stream causing extra workloads for computing and communication systems. So these new applications require high computing and communication resources. In addition to mobile multimedia, the second trend is to support interactive applications such as online gaming, online meeting, video conference, and mobile inter interactive augmented reality. Um, how many of you have heard mobile interactive augmented reality? Please raise your hand. Yeah, OK. Um, half of you know this one. Yeah, it's quite attractive in the future. If we just take a photo of the building, and then we can get the, the information of uh, this building from the internet without knowing the name of this building and typing the name of this building through Google to search. So for these new applications, we are very careful when we design this system because we need real-time information processing and the transmission. Otherwise, we cannot play online game and collaborate with our friends through internet. The third trend is to support intelligent systems and uh, pervasive applications. Many of you have uh, 
uh, heard Internet of Science these days. And Internet of Science is a new evolution of the Internet. The purpose is to allow everything, every people, to be connected together any time and any place, ideally using any network <laughs> and any service. So the purpose is to build a smart environment, built up on the future internet to support the smart applications such as smart energy, smart building, healthcare, and smart digital society. So for these applications, they require intelligent and ubiquitous computing and the communications to maintain the connections of a lot of devices. So these new applications are very exciting, attractive, and promising, but also pose great challenges on the future internet. The first challenge is the explosive growth of data traffic, also we call the network big data. According to Cisco white, white paper, the total mobile data traffic is expected to rise around 57% annually, leading to tenfold increase of the mobile traffic growth from 2014 to 2019. And the second challenge is a massive increase in the number of interconnected devices caused by the internet of everything. So by 2020, there will be 50 billion devices connected together through the internet. And the third challenge is the continuous emergence of new services and applications, like high definition, uh, ultra high definition video, 3D video. All these we consume tremendous computing and communication resources, and also they demand high quality of service. So according to European Horizon 2020 uh, definition about uh, the future 5G networks, we need to provide 1,000 times higher wireless capacity compared to 2010. This is the first objective. Secondly, we need to save the energy up to 90% per service provided. In particular, the 5G network should facilitate very dense deployment of wireless communication links to connect 7 trillion wireless devices. And also, <coughs> it's quite important to create the service flexibly. We need to reduce the service creation time cycle from 90 hours at the moment to 90 minutes based on the new technology, software-defined network, and the network functional virtualization. And also, we need to provide a secure, reliable, and dependable internet. So to achieve these objects, scheduling mechanism plays a very important role because they can control access to the shared system resources and also prevent the traffic flows from competing with each other which can lead the improved system resource optimization to avoid the traffic collision and also to improve user perceived quality of service. A number of scheduling mechanisms, such as priority queuing, generalized process sharing, weighted fair queuing, and the hybrid scheduling mechanisms have been proposed for this purpose. Now, I will give a brief introduction to these different scheduling mechanisms. The first one is uh, priority queuing. This is uh, an important and uh, popular mechanism for provisioning of differentiated quality of service. Um, as shown in this figure, traffic flow one and flow two share the surface capacity of this priority queuing system. Because traffic flow two has no priority, it can be suffered only when the queue of high priority traffic flow one becomes empty. Therefore, this scheduling mechanism can provide superior service for high priority traffic flow one, but the weakness of this scheduling mechanism is it lacks of fairness because 
the traffic tool may not be served if there are a lot of packets waiting at the traffic flow once queue. So to improve fairness, generalized process sharing, or GPS for short, have been proposed. Uh, in GPS, each traffic flow is assigned with a fixed weight, which can guarantee a minimum surface capacity. For example, traffic flow 1, flow 2, until flow n are scheduled by GPS. The weight mu1 is assigned to traffic flow 1. So the guaranteed surface capacity is mu1 times the total surface capacity C. So this scheduling mechanism can provide better fairness compared to priority queuing, and also can make traffic isolation because each traffic flow is guaranteed with a minimum surface capacity, mu i times c, even other traffic flows are greedy in demanding surface. It can also make work conserving, which means if any of this queue is empty, that means the guaranteed surface capacity is not required for the moment. So the system can redistribute this guaranteed surface capacity to other backlogged track flow in order to improve the system utilization. And to combine the advantages of priority queuing and the generalized process sharing, the hybrid PQ-GPS system has been proposed. As shown in this figure, traffic flow one, for example, real-time voice traffic is assigned with the highest priority. Other traffic flows, such as real-time video, non-real-time video for us to download the video stream, and the background traffic are scheduled by GPS with the no, traffic tra no priority. So to provide the differentiated quality of service to traffic flow 2 until flow n, we can assign different ways to these traffic flows. Therefore, this hybrid scheduling mechanism can provide a strict high priority to delay sensitive application and also can maintain fairness as well as differentiated quality of service for other traffic flows. The so Cisco have built two routers based on the idea of this scheduling mechanism. And the network traffic has a significant impact on the performance of uh, computer networks and the scheduling mechanisms. But recent measurement studies have shown that realistic traffic in high-speed networks, in particular in multi-surface networks, exhibits heterogeneous properties. For example, multimedia applications generate long-range dependent signal traffic and have strict quality of service requirements. Similarity means traffic bursts appears over a large number of time scales, and the traffic arrivals have long, large lag correlation. But the text communications, like when we access uh, uh, internet, uh, we get some web page with text there, or when we send the email, the traffic is short range dependent, non first traffic. So. These two types of traffic, in nature, they are totally different. But when we provide more detailed information about the signal traffic and the Poisson traffic later on. So in order to investigate the performance of the system and the shaping mechanism, we can use either simulation or analytical modeling. However, the convergence of simulation experiments and the signal traffic is very slow because we need to run simulation experiments for a long time to achieve reliable and stable performance results. So, under this case, analytical model becomes a cost-effective method because we can use advanced mathematical tools like probabilities, statistics, and query theories to derive the performance matrix using numerical equations and solve the questions to get the results quickly. So, analytical modeling is a cost-effective method for investigating performance and heterogeneous network traffic. 
Although the hybrid scheduling mechanism has been proposed and received a lot of research efforts to improve its performance, but there hasn't been any analytic model developed for this system because of two reasons. The first one is the interdependent relationship between traffic flows that share the circuit capacity. And the second one is the high complexity for modeling heterogeneous traffic in the whole system. So our research developed the first comprehensive analytic model for this hybrid scheduling system. And also, we use the model as a cost-effective tools for performance analysis and network resource management. To present the analytic model, the first question is, what's safe similarity? So safe similarity is something fairly same regardless of scale. It's also called the fractal properties. The concept and the definition of a safe similar process are quite complex. But this figure could give us a good intuition. Let's have a look at this figure. The largest the triangle consists of a lot of smaller triangles. But if you check this one, this is triangle, although it's smaller, but its shape and structure are similar to those of the largest one. Then let's have a look at this one. This triangle is even smaller, but the shape and structures are also similar to those of the largest triangle. So no matter how big the triangle is, it always looks the same. This is called a safe similarity. Then the question is why this concept can be also used to describe network traffic. This figure depicts the measurement results of realistic traffic in high-speed networks. So, we have five things here. The, the horizontal axis represents the, the time unit used for measurements and the statistics. And the vertical axis represents the number of packets arriving in each time unit. You can see that this one, when the time unit is small, 0.01 second, 0.1 second, 1 second, traffic is always bursting because the number of packets arriving in each time unit is marginally different. And when time unit increases to 10 seconds, 100 seconds, traffic is always bursting. So this scale invariant burstness is called traffic safe similarity. Safe similar traffic has been found to be a ubiquitous phenomenon in computer networks. For example, local area networks, wide area networks, multimedia systems, and even wireless networks. Because safe similar traffic can significantly degrade the network performance and the use of perceived quality of service, so it's very important to consider these traffic properties when we investigate the performance of computer system and the communication systems. Without that, the traffic is safe similar. Then, how to model safe signal traffic? Actually, since the discovery of traffic safe similarity, a lot of research has been made in this area to propose the new tools and the new techniques to generate safe signal traffic and model safe signal traffic choices. Among this model, FBM traffic has been identified as an efficient way for modeling and generating safe signal traffic. Let us use AFT, this function, to represent the cumulative number of packets arriving up to time t. So AFT is given by this equation, mt times this item. m is the mean traffic rate, a is the variance coefficient, and zft, this one, is special. It's a centered Gaussian process with the mean zero and the variance t to the power 2h. So the variance of FBM traffic is given by this equation. And the h here is the Hurst parameter representing the degree of traffic similarity. Then 
What's the difference between Sicilian traffic and the traditional Poisson traffic? Let's have a look at this figure here. You can see that when time unit is quite small, 0.1 second, 0.1 second, 1 second, traffic is bursty. But when time unit increases to 10 seconds, 100 seconds, traffic bursty disappears. So the traffic bursty in short rate dependent traffic appears only over small time scales. So this traffic is different from the previous mentioned Sicilian traffic. So the traditional Poisson traffic is a typical example of short rate dependent traffic. We can also use APT to represent the number of packets arriving up to time t. Lambda is the mean traffic rate and the ZPT is a stochastic process with the mean zero and the variance. So we can use this function to represent uh, Poisson traffic. Then the question is how to model Sicilian traffic and the Poisson traffic in a single model? This is very challenging because the nature is different. But we propose to use Gaussian process to approximate the model Poisson traffic because the existing studies have shown that this approximation is quite reasonable. In particular, when the traffic arrival rate is large and the process in time tends to infinity. We have also used the simulation experiments to validate this approximation and found that it's a really important and useful method to deal with this challenge problem. Now, when we briefly present the analytic model, to start with, we will use the simple fundamental priority queuing system as an example. After we understand the method for modeling, and then we extend it to deal with hybrid shading mechanism. So for this case, you can see that in this priority queuing system, flow one is a high priority traffic generated by multimedia applications and modeled by FBM traffic. Flow two is low priority traffic generated by text communication and modeled by Poisson traffic. Our objective is firstly, we need to identify the total QNS distribution and then we focus on the individual QNS distribution and the noise probability for traffic flow one and flow two separately. About the total QNS distribution, it can be expressed by this equation. AFST represents the number of packets arriving from Poisson and Sibsilima traffic during time slot ST. APT represents the number of packets arriving from Poisson traffic. C is the surface capacity. Using large deviation principle, which is a very useful way to address FBM process, we can obtain the lower bound and the upper bound of the QNS distribution. Examining the lower bound and the upper bound, you can find that this part, the exponential function, is the same. So the only difference is the coefficient. So this finding inspired, inspired us to take the geometric mean of the lower bound and the upper bound to get the QNS distribution for the system. And after we get the total QNS distribution, we need to investigate the QNS distribution for traffic flow one and the flow two separately because we care about the user's quality, the quality of experience of each user. So for high priority traffic flow, it's actually served as if the low priority traffic flow doesn't exist because as long as there is packet waiting in this queue, no any packets can be served from the second traffic flow. Therefore, high priority traffic actually receives the full surface capacity of the whole system. So after we assign the whole surface capacity of this system 
into high priority traffic flow. This system is degraded into a single server, single queue system. So in the previous slides, we have already presented how to address a single traffic because we put single traffic and Poisson traffic together. Then it degrades to a single traffic, single, ser tra a single server, single query system. So now, if we give the full service capacity to high priority traffic flow, it, be it becomes a single server, single query system. So we can get the performance results using the uh, uh, formula in the previous slides. And the challenge is for the low priority traffic, what about uh, the QNS distribution here? In a stable priority queuing system, we observed that the Q length of high priority traffic is negligible compared to the Q length of low priority traffic flow. Why? Because let's think about the case. If always there is a packet waiting here for transmission, that means no any packet can be served from no priority traffic flow. As a result, the system becomes unstable. They cannot work properly. So as long as this system is working, so this queue should be, the queue length should be very small. And the number of packets waiting there is quite small as well compared to the no priority traffic flow. Therefore, the, we can use the total queue length distribution of the whole system to approximate the QNS distribution of the low priority traffic flow, then we get the results for long for low priority traffic and also high priority traffic flow. So for communication system, the QNS is not enough to describe the quality of the service. What we need, another one, is packet loss probability. For example, when we communicate, and we talk over phone. Sometimes I cannot hear your voice because the packets from you is dropped. So we care about the loss of probability. So how to get the loss of probability for this system? In a stable priority queue system, it has been proven that for any given queueness, the loss of probability divided by the queueness distribution becomes a constant. For example, when the QNS is x, the loss of probability divided by the QNS distribution equals to that when the QNS is b. We have already know the loss of probability, the QNS distribution here. So if we can have this constant alpha, then we can have the loss of probability. But for Gaussian traffic, if we have the mean traffic rate variance of increments and the surface rate, then we can use this formula to calculate this parameter alpha. And then we can have the most probability. So based on this procedure, we get the performance matrix for the most probability and the QNS distribution for the Q system, and in particular, for individual traffic flows. So we have already published this paper in IEEE Transaction Communications. And uh, the model is based on some approximation and also some, some, uh, uh, some approximation. And we need to validate the accuracy of this model. So to this end, we have developed a discrete event simulator using C++ language. And then we consider two typical scenarios with different Hurst parameters, 0.85 and 0.75. And then the surface capacity is set to 120. So for each scenario, we further consider three cases. In case one, the traffic rate of FBM traffic is 90, much larger than that of Poisson traffic which means in case one, FBM traffic dominates the inputs of the system. In case two, the traffic rate is the same, and in case three, Poisson traffic dominates the input of the system. Let's have a look at the performance results. So in this slide, 
the first three figures in first row represent the results for Q length distribution in case one, case two, case three. The three figures in the second row is about the most probability. Um, the red line here represents the simulation results, and the green line represent the green line represent the the analytical results for Poisson traffic, and the blue line represents the results for FBM traffic. You can see that the analytic mode results and the simulation results match with each other very well, which validate the accuracy of the analytic model. But when you check this, um, three, these figures, you can find that in case one, we can see the performance results for high priority traffic flow, but case two, case three, we can even couldn't see any you know, performance results for FBM traffic. We cannot see the packets waiting in the queue. This why? This is because we mentioned before the queue length of high priority traffic flow is negligible compared to the queue length of low priority traffic flow. But for this case, because the FBM traffic, the traffic rate is five times of that of a second traffic flow. Therefore, we can see very small Q lines here. This is also validated the empty buffer approximation used for priority queuing system. And uh, also you may ask a question. You have already get analytical results and simulation results matched with each other. So you have simulation. Why you need an analytic model? As we mentioned before, an analytic model is very efficient. For example, to produce this line, we use a normal computer. We can get the results within maybe, uh, I think one or two seconds, we can get this, uh, we can get the results for this, uh, this curve. But when we use simulation experiments, it takes a long time, in particular when the traffic rate is very high, we need to run simulation for a long time. Sometimes for my students, they just, uh, before going home, they just uh, put their uh, simulation experiments running over a computer and then get the results on the second day. So using simulation experiments, definitely we cannot get on-time control, on-time results for the communication systems. But uh, real-time processing is very important. So this is why we need the analytic model. This is the result for the second case. Hertz parameter is 0.75, and also we get the simulation results and the analytic results matched with each other very well. We said we use priority queuing system as a warm-up for analytic modeling. Now, we focus on the more complex hybrid shaded mechanism illustrated in this figure. So the modeling of a hybrid shaping mechanism is very challenging because you can see that a lot of traffic flows are sharing the surface capacity with different shaping mechanisms. So the interdependent relationship between them is quite complex. How to model them? And also, we need to consider heterogeneous network traffic in this network, and how to model heterogeneous network traffic. Um, to address this problem, we need to develop an efficient Q decomposition method following the idea we just presented for priority queue. We need to divide the original hybrid shading system into individual single server, single queue systems. So this decomposition can be carried out at two levels. At the high level, it can be divided into a single server, single queuing system with a traffic flow one, high priority traffic only, and a GPS system. And at the low level, the GPS system will be further decomposed into single server, single queuing systems. 
if we can reach this A, then we can solve the problem. But the challenge here is how to get the surface capacity for each of these cube to address this problem for high level decomposition is quite simple. Because if we treat this GPS system as low priority traffic, this system is degraded into two traffic flows with a single server priority queue system because we have already solved this problem. So we can get the surface capacity C1 and CP GPS easily. But how to divide GPS system into individual single server, single queue system? This issue is solved in our research as well. What we did is to define an RG ratio for each traffic flow in GPS system. RG ratio is the required surface capacity divided by the guaranteed surface capacity, which means required that means the traffic rate. And the guaranteed surface capacity is the mu1, mu i times the surface total surface capacity C. So you can see that if a traffic flow with a larger RG ratio, which means it will build a longer queue. And also we observe that even a small difference on the RG ratio can lead to a large difference on the queue length distribution. So for GPS system, for each traffic flow, we just calculate the RG ratio and we order, we label each of these traffic flow so that the Q less than the first one is less than the second one, less than the third one, until the last one. And the following the empty buffer approximation, we can use the total Q less distribution to approximate this one, and we get the surface capacity here. And use the total surface capacity minus this one, we can get the surface capacity for traffic flow one to N minus one. And step by step, we can get the surface capacity for each of these queue, and then we get the problem solved. We have also validated the accuracy of this model using simulation experiments. But to show the practical application of our model in realistic network, the parameters of the traffic flows are obtained from real world MPEG video traces. For example, M FBM traffic <coughs> flow one is from the film sinus of the lungs, the second one is from Star Wars 4, and the third one is from Jurassic Park 1. Again, we displayed the analytical results and the performance results obtained from simulation experiments. We also find that even under the realistic network traffic, our model reaches a very good accuracy of the, uh, accuracy of the analytical results. Okay, after we validate the analytical model, then the question is, in particular, when we collaborate with industry, they want to ask how your model can be used to solve the practical, practical problems. So we use two examples to show this. The first one is to use the model of priority queuing to address the issue of buffer allocation. For this example, the total buffer is 400, and the quality of service requirements in terms of loss probability is for first traffic flow should be, the loss probability should be less than 10 to the power minus 8. For the Poisson traffic should be less than 10 to the power minus 2. So how can we divide this buffer to different traffic flows so that the quality of surface is maintained. <coughs> what we can do is to use the analytic model to <coughs> produce the performance results. You can see here the bottom axis, x axis represents the buffer size assigned to FBM traffic. The left hand y axis represents the analytic results, loss probability for FBM traffic. This blue curve represents the results. You can see that when the buffer size increases, 
the most probability decrease, decrease until the buffer size is 73, the most probability becomes less than 10 to the power minus 8. So the minimum buffer size should be 73. And also, we use this one, upper x axis, to represent the buffer size assigned to Poisson traffic. And the y axis, this side, represents the results for most probability of Poisson traffic. We can find that, as shown in this blue curve, the minimum buffer size should be 33. So using this model, we can find the admission or admissible region for how to divide the buffer to different users so that the quality of the service can be maintained. So this one is quite important. This model can be embedded in the router or switch. Um, they can, you know, when the traffic changes, as long as we can get the traffic parameters, what we can do is use the model to get the results quickly and we can dynamically change the allocation of buffer size to different traffic flows so that all the users are happy with their service. And then the second example is to use the hybrid PQ GPS system to investigate the issue of minimum bandwidth requirements. This one is also very important. For example, like the B team, they're deploying the network. They want to always save the cost to, to make the network. So they don't want to over provision too much of the resources there. So how to find out the minimum bandwidth requirements so that they can reduce the cost to build the network. In this example, the problem can be described as this. The buffer size is given for each traffic flow, and the objective is to determine the traffic weight such that the required service capacity C of the hybrid shaping mechanism, like the router built by Cisco, could be the minimum requirements for the bandwidth. Then, this problem can be formalized as a, an optimization problem. This is the objective and the subject to these constraints. And then, for the system parameters given like this, we can use our model to explore the possible solution space of C and examine all possible combination of mu2, mu3, and mu4. And then we found that when the traffic weight assigned to flow tools, three and four as this combination, then the required surface capacity could be minimum. Then under this case, we can get you know, the, uh, spend less money to build the network for the user. And also, and also in some cases, if you provide this minimum surface capacity, if the weight is not optimized, assigned, then you can get, you cannot provide the required surface capacity, surface 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 quality for different users. So, to sum up, we developed the original analytic model for priority queue system and hybrid shared system. In particular, we consider the realistic heterogeneous network traffic. And also, we validated the accuracy of this model and used it for practical problem solving in telecommunication systems. About the future work, um, the first point is, at the moment, we are considering generalized process sharing, which is actually a fluid-based traffic, traffic, which means the server can serve packets from traffic one, traffic two, simultaneously. But in practice, in realistic router, this is not possible because the router should complete or terminate the service of one packet before going to the next one. So in realistic, weighted file queuing is widely used and is a packet-based GPS system. But how to 
extend this model to solve this more practical uh, shaded mechanism is quite challenging because here we need to consider the packed size and also consider the termination and the completion of the packet surface in one flow before going to another one. And uh, the second point is in wireless networks. A famous nature is called the fading nature of wireless channel because the condition, wireless communication condition changes and the surface capacity is changing as well. But all the existing model available for signal traffic considered constant surface weight for simplicity. But how to consider fading nature of wireless channels and make the model more realistic is very challenging. We, our thought is when we also use the Gaussian process to consider the, the surface capacity. And also in high performance computing system, uh, we have measured the property of job size. It has been shown the heavy tail distribution. Mm, a lot of job size is heavy tail distributed. But how to model this system is also very challenging. I would like to ask the time left for me, please. Not the time, please. How many time I have? For some questions? No, no, no. I, if I have time, I just want to real quick form go for this. OK. Good. Mm. So I hope to build a wide research collaboration with you all. I just want to quickly present my ongoing project so that we may find some shared interest. The first project is about green cloud computing. This work is motivated by this statistics. You can see that Climate Group have published the 2020 report showing that ICT infrastructure consumes 3% of worldwide electric energy, generating 2% of worldwide CO2 emissions, and this figure increased 16 to 20 percent per year, and doubled every four to five years. In particular, data centers are grow growing to large scale with the use of cloud computing cloud platform, and consumes 50 percent of ICT total electricity consumption. So, the applications, high performance computing, and multimedia service, the need intensive computation power and uh, tremendous transmission bandwidth. Now, this project is funded by Royal Academy of Engineering. Well, the purpose is to do performance modeling and optimization of multimedia cloud system. What we do is firstly uh, measure the traffic loads and the job size of high performance computing and the multimedia services. And then in our model, we consider not only the performance matrix, but also energy consumption. And then we use multi-objective optimization method to find out the trade-off between the performance and also the energy consumption. This is uh, the first project. The second one is uh, interdisciplinary research funded by FP7. So, um, the Online social networks such as MySpace, Facebook, Twitter have been widely accessed by wireless networks, uh, wireless devices, generating a new area called mobile social networks. So, uh, this project advocates a brand new angle to research into these new uh, mobile social networks by seamlessly integrating the social computing at the application layer and the mobile wireless network at the transmission layer. So the all you need knowledge is to propose a course layer design and integration of social computing and the wireless network in order to achieve uh, optimal optimization. The third project is uh, uh, funded by Huawei Technology. It's a big data analysis for all IP network reliability. As shown in this figure, all IP network in the future, we integrate heterogeneous wireless access 
to support ubiquitous communication. But a big problem in this network is a single failure or malicious attack can trigger a large number of alarms resulting redundancy and false alarm. For example, the failure of this router we trigger all connected nearby routers to generate alarms, leading to massive alarm information with increased complexity and high correlation. So the problem met by telecommunication operator and net and network device vendor is how to identify the root cause quickly and accurately from massive alarm information. Our method is, firstly, we develop a fast alarm collection scheme based on traffic prediction and analysis of KPI. We are doing an industry project which is use big data analysis to predict the, the uh, trend of KPI and when the KPI is different from the predicted uh, situation. They may give a alarm so that we can find the problem earlier than before. And also, we use big data analysis to field the unimportant alarm in order to reduce the amount of alarm information for pre-processing. And then we use data, big data analysis to identify the alarm correlation rules through data analysis to find the root cause and then we get the problem down. This is um, and the third project. The last one is for wireless multimedia networks. It's quite relevant to uh, the, the presentation I just uh, given. Uh, it's called the Quick Project. Um, you know, content-rich and uh, resource-hungry mobile multimedia applications generate uh, complex traffic patterns and demand high quality of experience. And uh, in network, there are a lot of problems. We just mentioned the fading and the limited transmission range. So to improve quality of experience, because it is determined not only by the network performance and also the quality of multimedia, therefore we propose to do joint design of two integrated parts by proposing network-aware adaptive multimedia processing and also multimedia-driven heterogeneous wireless networking to reach the good performance of future heterogeneous wireless multimedia networks. Thank you all for your time.